What on earth is that? A disc with information engraved in the metal? An iris that should open, I imagine, and blood. Mother? The dried blood. There. Yes, yes, it's mine. Sorry if I stained everything, but I must admit that, at the time, my thoughts were more on the pain than cleaning up after myself. Did you succeed in opening this, Iris? Yes, by putting the cross on the console and the three nails on the disc, the iris opens. It gives access to a hole where I put my hand, thinking I could fully open the iris. There's a handle at the bottom, and as you can see, it didn't turn out very well for me. There are Roman numerals, Arab numbers, and town names. Go on. I'm listening. What do you think? On each engraved piece of information, there's a hole. Those are for the nails, right? That's absolutely right. Tell me, I imagine that once we've solved this enigma, the iris opens, right? Exactly. If I can work it out myself, it looks like a kind of control panel. There's a cross shaped slot there. I'd say you've got a place to claim all the third cross in it. Tell me, Mother, you wouldn't know anything that might save me some time, would you? That's where you'll have to put the Clement the Third cross. You insert the cross into the slot, and it will open the iris. You ought to go, Louis. If someone finds us here, the situation might well become seriously complicated. Famous cross of Claymont the Third. Perfect. And one key found. Thank you.
Right. It's definitely an armillary sphere, but I have to find one that I can take with me. Otherwise, I risk drawing too much attention to my comings and goings. Now, where can I find a smaller one? See if the statues are in place yet. Shield toward the sword. Now well, that's good. The statue is already in the right place. The sword toward the Gorgon. That's good. It's in the right place. The lantern is already in the right position. Turn toward the shield. That statue is not positioned correctly. So that's Pandora's box? An urn? Mother seemed worried that I was able to open it. Hmm. I wonder why. So, I did well not to touch it. Caesar's Laurel Reef. Hmm. If Mortimer really is what my mother says he is, it could mean... No, that's impossible. No, no, not Caesar. Now, given all the relics preserved here, it wouldn't surprise me if Mortimer claimed it was Excalibur. Even if Mortimer is several centuries old, I don't see what part he has in this legend. So that's the exegesis of Judas. I hope Mortimer doesn't read it very often, otherwise he's going to notice that someone's stolen it. But that's just too bad. I need it. Right. I've got what I need. Now let's not waste any more time.
Atreus, the Miller brothers. Mother expressly forbade me from reading it. Golden elixir. Hmm. I'll keep it for later. Is surrounded by a triple circle. I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. Ah, Duriche. Congratulations for your efforts with Washington. I see that Sir Gregory did well to trust you. What can I do for you? I'm dreaming. My mother was right. He's not going to tell me one word about what happened to Emily. To tell you the truth, I'm in search of an armillary sphere. You wouldn't know where I can find it, would you? Well, well. So you do have a passion for astronomy. Von Volner has already bored me quite enough with all of his endless stories. You ought to concentrate, Louis. Politics is an art that requires all one's attention. Refrain from spreading yourself too thin and leave stargazing to the poets. <laughs> what can I say? I'm only- Ask Volner. I'm sure he must have it among his effects. Perfect. Thank you, my Lord Duke. Leave me now. See you later. Not too shocked. I beg your pardon? About Peru, this morning. I asked you if you weren't too shocked by it all.
Yes, of course. I, I still can't believe it. And uh, neither can I. How could he do that to us? There are increasingly fewer and fewer of us on Mortimer's side. I don't see at all how we are going to win the conference. Tell me. I was wondering. I won't keep you any longer. See you later, monsieur. Hmm. Dear E, I received your last letter. Devil's Thorn, to be used to uncover the best disguised traits.
sorry, sir, but Mr. Peru is not seeing visitors at the moment. He's resting and is to see no one. Good luck. Ah, Louis. Glad you're here. Blasted. He's gonna talk about my mother. Come and see what I've found. There are pieces of paper in the ashes of the chimney. Someone's been burning something here. Incredible. He doesn't seem to want to speak to me about what happened between my mother and the Hillsborough sisters. Show me a little. Look, it's possible to distinguish two different writing styles. Hmm. The rest of the correspondence between my mother and Emma. Someone tried to burn an exchange of messages. I'm certain there must be more. Shit. What on earth is he doing? There were... Pardon? There were more. Emma and my mother communicated through messages in this room. I found their correspondence and I preferred to burn it all so as not to leave any traces. But why didn't you say so? That's what I'm doing now, Mr. President. Before, well, it all seemed unimportant compared to everything that had happened. Uh, yes, you're right. Moreover, we ought to lend a helping hand. I shall have a word with Lord Mortimer, because the conference must not make us forget about Sarah. No. No thank you. No. I certainly don't want Mortimer giving me any more attention than he is at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. If you don't mind, I'll take care of it. As you wish. Keep persevering. I shall see you later. I wasted enough time. The Bible. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. Hey, look, there. Hmm. No, I don't see anything. Come, Louis, look. Someone's clearly drawn a four in the dust. I have a clue. <sighs> I better take the Bible before he works his way back to it. chest with the occult symbol representing air. Bible's still there.
up an elixir. An armillary sphere. Perfect. That will save me some time. I only hope that he isn't going to realize it right away. The light water will give me a little reprieve. I have no time to lose, so I might as well not bother him. My 
dear Giuseppe, poor health forbids me from joining you. Please thank Sir Gregory for his invitation to Lord Mortimer's. I'm convinced you'll be able to strengthen our agreements. Please tell Sir Gregory that his enterprise concerning our friend, Cardinal Bishop Chiaramonti, is following its course. I place my trust in you. May God bless you and give you protection. S. His Holiness Pope Pius VI by Pompeo Petoni. This should help Piaggio feel at home. Carmelite water will give me a little reprieve. I have no time to lose, so I might as well not bother him. Pound. Charles IV of Spain. Now there's no chance of Godoy forgetting who he owes everything to. Maria Luisa of Parma. Although not Godoy's true love, the queen is his benefactress according to some people.
painting. It looks unfinished. A piece by Lord Mortimer, I presume. Hmm. A rather avant-garde technique. The Titan against men. <laughs> How ironic. Right. This time, it'll be a lot quicker. If I remember rightly, the code was 1191. Weaknesses of the Human Psyche by Gilhelm Trimor. Gilhelm Trimor. Trimor. An anagram of Mortimer. Wow. Arrogant enough to publish writings on mental control. Full view of everyone. I wonder who he's writing for. map of Europe. Someone's written 26 million in France. symbol of power and stability, temperance, which expresses a reward, and the chariot, now that evokes triumph. If this hand is anything to go by, Mortimer's destiny promises to be glorious. Huh. It looks like obsidian or, or onyx. It must weigh a ton. What on earth could that be? chest with a motif representing the alchemical symbol of fire.
feathers, pigeons probably. There. Those are the nails I was looking for. I noticed they were old and rusty, but... But I hadn't noticed these traces of... Could that be blood? It, is it really the relic of the Holy Cross? I can hardly believe it. Come on, let's get out of here. 6466, six, six, if I remember correctly.
So, good. You've managed to gather all the keys. Yes, that's right. I have everything. What should I start with? Place the Clement III cross on the console. Then you have to put the nails on the disc of the door. What hole should I put the nails in? Well, I can't really advise you there, because I haven't exactly made the best choices myself. All I can say is that you have to insert one to choose a town, one to choose a chapter, and one to choose a verse. Those are Roman numerals on the disc. What theme did you start with? As the fresco shows the birth of Christ, I placed one nail in Bethlehem, one in chapter two, and one in verse six. The iris opened a little. I thought it was normal. Behind the aperture of the iris, there is a duct in which I put my hand. I felt something like a valve at the bottom. I thought by turning it the door would open, or the iris would open completely, or something else would happen. Instead, I felt something like an axe cut off my hand. I really thought it was the end of me. What did you do then? Well, although I had made some unfortunate choices, I was lucky in that Mortimer was well stocked with drugs. I raided his supplies of medicine. All right, my turn now. Go ahead, impress me. I'll shut up and let you concentrate. This exegesis contains comments from Judas on the different Gospels. It only contains certain chapters and verses, and the chapters are indicated by Roman numerals. The lexicon refers to different chapters and verses from the exegesis of Judas. The cycle of the moons has nothing to do with what I'm doing right now. Chapter 2, verse 6. Jesus was born of Mary and Joseph on the 22nd of Tavith at midnight, 3,762, in the village of Bethlehem. Chapter 2, verse 6. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered of a child. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. What 
theme did you start with? As the fresco shows the birth of Christ, I placed one nail in Bethlehem, one in chapter 2, and one in verse 6. The iris opened a little. I thought it was normal. Behind the aperture of the iris, there is a duct in which I put my hand. I felt something like a valve at the bottom. I thought by turning it the door would open, or the iris would open completely, or something else would happen. Instead, I felt something like an axe cut off my hand. I really thought it was the end of me. What did you do then? Well, although I had made some unfortunate choices, I was lucky in that Mortimer was well stocked with drugs. I raided his supplies of medicine. cross is stuck in the mechanism. I can't do anything. The cycle of the moons has nothing to do with what I'm doing right now. Fresco clearly shows the birth of Christ. Louis, I can assure you that that is not the solution to this enigma. This fresco's only purpose is to mislead. I know that now. Please, focus on another theme about Christ. We'll have to trust her. Yes, it's definitely a representation of the birth of Christ, but some of the details have flaked away. I can't see any other clues. One thing is for sure, this enigma deals with the life of Jesus, like my mother said. You can see that the pain has come off in parts. Difficult to see what was there, but I can distinguish the letters N-R-I. Nothing more. Why, of course, they're part of the initials I-N-R-I that you can find on the cross of Jesus at his crucifixion. Hmm. It looks like there are three types of inscriptions. Clearly, we have names of towns, Arabian numerals, and Roman numerals. There, there are three styles of writing, and I've got three nails. There must be a link. I must surely put in one nail per category. Chapter 1, verse 9. Jesus was baptized by John in Jordan on the 9th of Hezvan, 3852.
chapter 1, verse 9, Jesus was baptized by John and Jordan on the 9th of Hezvan, 3852. Chapter 1, verse 9, And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John and Jordan. And coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. Chapter 2, verse 6. Jesus was born of Mary and Joseph on the 22nd of Tavith at midnight, 3762, in the village of Bethlehem. Chapter 2, verse 6. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered of a child. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him and swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Chapter 1, verse 9. Jesus was baptized by John and Jordan on the 9th of Hezvan, 3852. Mortimer deliberately set a trap by showing the birth of Christ, then maybe the solution is the contrary. The death of Christ in that case? Chapter 19, verse 17. Jesus was crucified on the 8th of Nisan, 3793, in a place near Jerusalem. The Romans put a crown of thorns on his head. Chapter 19, verse 17. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, on either side, and Jesus in the midst. Chapter 24, verse 3. Jesus rose from the dead on the 14th of Nisan, 3793, in Nazareth. He appeared with a halo above his head.
chapter 10, verse 30. I and the Father are one. Chapter 10, verse 30. I and my Father are one. Chapter 19, verse 17. Jesus was crucified on the 8th of Nisan, 3,793, in a place near Jerusalem. The Romans put a crown of thorns on his head. Chapter 19, verse 17. Jesus was crucified on the 8th of Nisan, 3,793, in a place near Jerusalem. The Romans put a crown of thorns on his head. Chapter 19, verse 17. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, on either side, and Jesus in the midst. Chapter 19, verse 17. Jesus was crucified on the 8th of Nisan, 3,793, in a place near Jerusalem. The Romans put a crown of thorns on his head. The cycle of the moons has nothing to do with what I'm doing right now. Chapter 19, verse 17. Jesus was crucified on the 8th of Nisan, 3,793, in a place near Jerusalem. The Romans put a crown of thorns on his head. works. Well done, Louis. I hadn't seen those other wheels. Try connecting the theme to see if it goes all the way. There must surely be a connection between the wheels. There are different icons on this wheel, but it looks like some of them can't be connected to the other wheels. Now, 
Given the difference between the number of icons and the number of towns, I think that only one path connects all the wheels with one another. Let's try to connect the theme I've chosen with the rest. This wheel contains several symbols made up of one or two figures and one letter. The highest figure does not exceed 31, and each letter corresponds to a month of the year. A for April, and M for March. I think these symbols must represent a specific date. This wheel represents the different moons. In the occult sciences, we represent the full moon by an X. As for the dark moon, called the new moon, in cults, it's, well, it's often associated with something harmful. Look at this, there are notches between each of the wheels. So, I have to link the name of the town from the theme I've chosen to an icon, then to a date, and finally, the date to the moon. what combination corresponds to the chosen theme. Chapter 19, verse 17. Jesus was crucified on the 8th of Nisan, 3,793, in a place near Jerusalem. The Romans put a crown of thorns on his head. Chapter 19, verse 17. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, on either side, and Jesus in the midst. Chapter 19, verse 17. Jesus was crucified on the 8th of Nisan, 3,793, in a place near Jerusalem. The Romans put a crown of thorns on his head.
during new moon, the moon is entirely in the shadow. Then, the shadow moves from west to east, meaning left to right, and goes through the following states. Waxing crescents, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, last quarter, waning crescent, and the cycle starts over with the full shadowed new moon. The moon shadow moves from west to east. Seventh of Shaban, 607, first quarter. The moon shadow moves from west to east. During new moon, the moon is entirely in the shadow. Then, the shadow moves from west to east, meaning left to right, and goes through the following states. Waxing crescents, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, last quarter, waning crescent, and the cycle starts over with the full shadowed new moon. During new moon, the moon is entirely in the shadow. Then, the shadow moves from west to east, meaning left to right, and goes through the following states. Waxing crescents, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, last quarter, waning crescent, and the cycle starts over with the full shadowed new moon. The moon shadow moves from west to east. During new moon, the moon is entirely in the shadow. Then, the shadow moves from west to east, meaning left to right, and goes through the following states. Waxing crescents, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, last quarter, waning crescent, and the cycle starts over with the full shadowed new moon.
7th of Shaban, 607, first quarter. The moon shadow moves from west to east. During new moon, the moon is entirely in the shadow. Then, the shadow moves from west to east, meaning left to right, and goes through the following states. Waxing crescents, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, last quarter, waning crescent, and the cycle starts over with the full shadowed new moon. I think I can make out each one of the icons apart from the one covered in blood. Going clockwise from the one I just mentioned, we have the halo that represents the resurrection. The waves represent the baptism of Jesus. It's more difficult to identify the next one. Maybe a crib and in that case it's surely linked to the birth of Christ. The red herring that my mother followed. Then. The symbol represents the crown of thorns that Jesus wore during his crucifixion. The dove also represents the baptism, certainly another red herring. Then comes the symbol of the Trinity. And finally, the candle that must stand for the Last Supper. Mother, what do you think? As I told you, I didn't get that far. Nevertheless, these icons do represent moments in the life of Christ. This wheel contains several symbols made up of one or two figures and one letter. The highest figure does not exceed 31, and each letter corresponds to a month of the year. A for April, and M for March. I think these symbols must represent a specific date. I can feel the lever at the bottom. Good luck. I never doubted you, my son.